Okay, I started recording. So it's great pleasure to have uh, Takahiro Nishinaka from um, Kyoto Rhythmeska University. So he's going to tell us about the Ajustaga theory, SDLT, and AGT correspondence. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, first of all, thanks to Satoshi for, for this invitation. Uh, I'm very happy to give my first Zoom seminar. So today I want to talk about Azure Stagros Series as duality and AGT correspondence, which is based on my ongoing work with these people in Rismakan University. Uh, sorry, he, he, he graduated from Rismakan University and he's now at Kyoto University. And I hope this paper will come out very soon. So let's get started. So uh, today I like to focus on AGT correspondence, which is a correspondence between four dimensions and two dimensions. And in the four dimensional side, you consider the class of partition function of some particular n equals two gauge theory. And uh, this is a quiver diagram of a typical example of the uh, gauge series. And here uh, each circle stands for SU2 gauge group. So you have SU2, SU2, dot, 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 SU2s. And uh, in between the two neighboring SU2, you have one by fundamental hypermotor. So this bifundamental hyper is charged under this S2 and this S2. And you have bifundamental, bifundamental, dot, 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 bifundamental. And uh, at the end of the tails, you have a fundamental hypermotor. That's coupled to this one. So you have two copies of fundamental hypers coupled to this S2. And you also have another two copies of fundamental hypers coupled to this S2. So uh, this guy is a linear quiver gauge series with n equals two supersymmetry and uh, SU2 gauge groups. And you consider the net class of partition function of this guy. So that's the quantity in four dimensions. And in two dimensions, you instead consider a Lieber CFD, bosonic Lieber CFD, defined on sphere with k punctures. I mean, this k is the uh, number of circles here plus three. I mean, the number of circles is the number of SU2s, which is k minus three, and the number of punctures here is k. So these two numbers are correlated. And uh, at each of these k punctures, uh, we insert the Villazola primary. So uh, basically in the two dimensional side, we consider a k point correlation function of these vertex operators. And in particular, actually, uh, we focus on the conformal block of this k point function. And the AGT correspondence states that these two quantities are identical under some identification of parameters in four dimensions and two dimensions. And uh, for example, the mass parameters of these hypermotor present in four dimensions are basically related to these alphas in, in this liberal momentum. And the uh, gauge couplings here uh, of these gauge groups are related to the uh, Zs, which are the locus of these functions or complex structure of the ring surface. So this is the AGT correspondence, okay? Now, there is a less known generalization of, of the AGT correspondence that was studied by these people, uh, okay? That was studied by these people. And uh, their claim is that they consider some, uh, some more sophisticated theory in four dimensions. Uh, they consider a SU2 uh, gauge theory coupled to two copies of strongly coupled CFDs called Argyrus double series. And uh, there are many different Argyrus double series, but this particular Argyrus double series has a name A1, D2N theory. I mean, this is a name of this particular Argyrus double series. And here N is uh, a, a positive integer. So N can be any positive integer. So when you fix N, you get, you fix this theory and you fix this coupled system. And um, since they are strongly coupled, um, they don't have a useful Lagrangian description in n equals two sense. So in particular, you can't compute the path integral of these theories because you don't have a Lagrange. But in any case, they are strongly coupled CFTs uh, with n equals two supersymmetry and uh, uh, they have a global symmetry whose SU2 subgroup is gauged by this middle SU2. So uh, you can think of this coupled system as a, a SU2 gauge theory whose matter sector is composed of these Argyrus double series. Okay. 
And their claim is that they consider uh, the necrosis partition function of this guy on one hand. Okay? And on the other hand, in two dimensions, they consider uh, some two-point function of some crazy local operators. I mean, these local operators are not the origin ordinary one. These guys are not Bilasov primaries, but something else. And uh, they are very crazy operator, but uh, whatever crazy local operator you have, they are just local operators. So two-point function of local operators uh, is basically related to the inner product of two states by the state operator. So in any case, uh, you, can, you can think of this two-point function as the inner product of the states. Okay. And this n is this n, so uh, this is a label of the theory. And uh, how crazy are these two operators? Well, these operators or these two states are actually simultaneous eigenstates of these Vilasovo generators. I mean, n is this n, and it's a positive integer. So these guys are roughly annihilation operator in a sense uh, of the uh, Vilasovo algebra. And this guy is an eigenstate of ln, ln plus one, dot, 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 and L2n. So it's roughly a coherent state, in a sense, of the Bilasov object. So it's totally different from the Bilasov primary. Okay? And in any case, their claim is that uh, this inner product of this crazy state is identical to the necrosis position function of this guy. That's their claim. And this is the generalization of the AGT correspondence. And uh, I'm going to call it generalized AGT correspondence. Now, uh, what, is, what is totally different from the original HGT correspondence is that you can't compute this left-hand side by localization because you don't have a Lagrangian. Okay? So it's, it's uh, basically impossible to compute this guy by path integral and localization, unlike the Lagrangian theory. For Lagrangian theory, you can compute this guy by localization, but it's not possible for this guy. Okay? That's a big difference. Now, what do I mean by localization? Well, localization is a technique to evaluate the path integral of supersymmetric Lagrangian theories. And for example, uh, let's focus on this n equals two Lagrangian theories. Again, uh, this circle stands for the gauge group, and this box stands for the fundamental hypermode of the threads. So you have uh, four fundamental hypers coupled to this gauge group, okay? And I wanna consider the path integral of this guy. And the path integral of this guy is composed of the path integral of the gauge sector and the matter sector. And let's focus on the path integral of the gauge sector. So the path integral of the gauge sector uh, is actually uh, giving you an integral over the modularized space of instantons. Because uh, instantons are classical solutions to the equation of motion, the gauge sector. So when you perform the path integral of this guy, you get an integral over the modularized space of instantons. And then the localization implies this integral over the modularized space of instantons is localized on fixed points of a torus action on the modularized space of instantons. I mean, the uh, instanton modularized space is acted by uh, some uh, group, uh, which is corresponding to the rotational uh, symmetry of the space time and uh, gauge symmetry at the, at the infinity. And uh, uh, due, to that, uh, towards, uh, due to that action of the group, uh, this integral of the modularized space of instantons is localized on the fixed points of this torus action. And what is interesting is that these fixed points are, are labeled by a pair of Young diagrams. So what's happening here is that this path integral of the gauge sector reduces to a sum over fixed points, or in other words, sum over pairs of Young diagrams. And therefore, we have this kind of formula. This is roughly the uh, uh, result of the uh, localization or result of the path integral of this cell under some omega background, actually. And here, uh, what is important is that here you have a sum over pairs of Young diagrams because this is coming from the path uh, sum over fixed points on the modular space. And Y1 and Y2 are arbitrarily young diagrams uh, uh, with arbitrary number of boxes. And the uh, absolute value of Y 
is corresponding to the number of boxes inside these Young atoms. And uh, uh, this Q is an exponential of the gauge coupling. So roughly this is an instant on factor. And you can think of this uh, exponent as the instant number. So instant number is given by the sum of the number of boxes inside the Young diagrams. And uh, this part in the sum is roughly regarded as the result of the path integral of the gauge sector and the matter sector in the instant on background. So uh, this first factor, uh, z back, uh, is, a, is a result of the path integral uh, in the instant on background. And this blue factor uh, is a result of the path integral of the matter sector, okay? Because you have four fundamental hypers, you have a product of four factors, okay? So this is roughly the Nekrasov's formula for the Nekrasov partial function of this guy. And uh, what is important here is that the, this sum appears because, uh, because of the path integral of the gauge sector. As I said before, this sum comes from uh, the uh, sum over the fixed points on the modular space, and that is coming from the path integral of the gauge sector. And in particular, this sum has nothing to do with the path integral of the matter sector. Actually, the path integral of the matter sector gives you this factor. This is roughly uh, the uh, uh, order effect of the path integral of the matter sector is included in here. Okay? So what kind of matter sector you have uh, fixes this factor. Okay? Now, then a natural question arises here. What about for this guy? This is a gauge theory uh, that uh, Gayoto Teshna and Mariyoshi uh, Bonelli Tanzini uh, studied in the context of the generalized AGT response. Uh, isn't it possible to have a similar formula for this theory? Well, as I said before, uh, these matter sectors don't have a Lagrangian. So you can't perform the path integral. It's not possible to evaluate the partition function of this guy uh, by localization or path integral. That, that's about the matter sector. Matter sectors are actually a uh, non Lagrangian. Okay. But the gauge sector is still a Lagrangian theory. You have a gauge, uh, you have a Lagrangian for this gauge sector. So, uh, in principle, you could consider the path integral of this gauge sector. Then, what, what's happening? Well, the gauge sector is the same as before. So uh, the same thing must happen. Uh, the path integral of the gauge sector uh, must give you an integral over the instant on modular space. And uh, uh, presumably the localization uh, maps that integral uh, to a sum over the Young diagrams. Because the sum over Young diagrams is a sum over fixed points on the instant on modular space. So uh, naively, even for this complicated, sophisticated theory, the partition function is presumably decomposed in this way. And this sum appears here just because we have the same path integral for the uh, vector multiple here. And y1 and y2 are labeling uh, the fixed points on the instant homogenized space. Well, we don't know the Lagrangian for this matter sector, so we can't. Uh, compute the path integral of this matter sector. So that's why we don't know how to evaluate this factor. But uh, whatever matter sector you have, uh, we expect this kind of decomposition just because we have uh, uh, this vector multiple, which is still Lagrangian. Okay. Then a natural question is that you can compute this whole thing by generalized AGT as an inner product of two states, two crazy states, which are sort of uh, coherent states of Villas or algebra. So you can, you can compute in principle uh, this, this guy, whole thing. And the question is, is it possible to decompose that result of the generalized AGT correspondence into this form, in this form? Isn't it possible to decompose the result of generalized AGT as a sum over uh, pairs of young values? That's my, that's my question today. And if that's possible, that would be nice because uh, from that decomposition, you could read off this factor. 
which is supposed to be the result of the path integral of this non-Lagrangian series. You can't compute it by a uh, uh, four-dimensional ana analysis because you don't have a Lagrangian, but you could compute this factor from the 2D analysis or decomposing generalized AGT result. So the question is, isn't it possible to uh, decompose the result of generalized AGT in this way? Okay. And today in this talk, I wanna give you an answer to this question. And uh, so in our work, we actually find, we actually found that the result of the generalized AGT uh, correspondence, I mean, the necrosal Poisson function of this guy computed by generalized AGT is actually decomposed in this way. If and only if you replace the gauge group with U2. I mean, this is one subtlety. Um, in many cases, uh, people don't pay attention to the difference between U2 and SC2, and uh, that's, uh, but in this, in our case, it matters actually. Uh, because the, this sum over the Yang diagrams are actually sum over fixed points on U2 instantons instead of SU2. So in order to have this kind of formula, uh, you need U2 gauge instead of SU2. But the thing is, generalized AGT is about SU2 gauge groups. So we, we have to take care of the difference between these two. That's one thing. And we did it, and we found a way to evaluate this factor. So that's one thing I want to talk about today. So uh, decomposing the result of generalized AGT into this form uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, uh, by taking care of the difference between these two gauge groups. That's one thing. And the uh, uh, second thing I'd like to talk about uh, is uh, by using this factor, you can compute the partition function of more general gauge theory, actually. And for example, you can compute the partition function of this guy. This guy includes an extra fundamental hyper here, I mean, compared to this one. So we, we set small n equals two here, and I introduced extra fundamental hyper here. And the thing is, if you have an extra fundamental hyper here, uh, this guy cannot be engineered by AGT. I mean, you can't use AGT. AGT is not available for, for, the, for, for the study of this theory. Um, the reason is that you can't engineer this theory by compactifying two M5 brains. Um, actually, when you have three M5 brains, actually you can, you can create this theory, but uh, with two M5 brains, it's impossible to create this theory. And that's, that's why uh, AGT uh, for Villasol algebra is not applicable for, for this theory. So uh, the upshot is you can't compute the partition function of this guy using AGT, but that's not a problem for now because uh, we already read off this factor. This factor is supposed to be the result of the path integral of these matter sectors. Again, you can't compute this factor uh, in four dimensions because you don't know the Lagrangian. But you can compute this factor using generalized AGT. And once you get this factor, it's quite easy to introduce an extra fundamental hyper. So using this factor read off uh, from this first part of uh, our work, uh, we could compute the partition function of this. And uh, this theory is quite interesting. It has a nice S duality property, and uh, our result of the partition function of this guy is actually consistent with the S duality in a sense. So, uh, this is the second thing I want to talk about in this talk. So, the goal of my talk today is to explain these two statements the decomposition of the uh, result of the generalized AGT. Uh, and also using that result, uh, computing, uh, we wanna compute the partition function of this guy. That's what I, what I wanna talk about today, okay? So uh, maybe uh, this is the motivation and uh, summary of uh, my, our, our work. So uh, if any uh, question is there, uh, I mean, any questions so far? I mean, I guess Satoshi said uh, questions are, I mean, we should wait to ask questions until the end of the talk. But if you have any question, please ask. I mean, please feel free to ask. Can you hear me? Uh, okay. If you have, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, please unmute yourself in the audience. Uh, I have one question. So the, so this, yeah, yeah. focus on this, this uh, the, how to say, irregular puncture. 
for A1 mm -hmm. to N, but can you generalize to some other irregular functions for instance A1 A type, A1 D? Ah. Good, good. Let, let, let's see. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, so this is the slide I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna show you later, but uh, so uh, let's see. So I will show you this slide again later. <laughs> uh, so uh, let's see, let, let's look at this right bottom, uh, bottom right picture. This is a, a, a 2D configuration uh, uh, for the A1D2N. So you you can engineer this a one d two n survey by compactifying two two sorry two m five brains on this Riemann surface, mm -hmm. and here you have one irregular singularity and one regular singularity, mm -hmm. and this is a configuration for a one d two n. And as as you said, uh, we could engineer a different type of Archer Stegros survey by using a different two D configuration, and in particular a one comma a series mm -hmm. uh, can be engineered. Uh, if you get rid of this guy, I mean, yeah. if you if you just include irregular puncture here, yeah. and uh, without this regular puncture, uh, you can engineer a one comma a theory. Yes, yes. that that's true. But um, in that case, you cannot gauge the flavor symmetry oh, of a one comma a theory because that is coming from the irregular oh, puncture. And in many cases, in most cases, it's u one flavor u one, which cannot be gauged in forty. Uh -huh. In marginal sense, I see. So, yeah. so yeah, you need a ga ga gauge group to obtain this this necklace of factor for irregular puncture. Yeah, yeah, good question. Uh -huh. Yep, yeah. I wanna I wanna do the instant expansion of the partition function, uh -huh. and so you know, uh, in the class of partition function is decomposed into the perturbative part and instant part, and usually for Lagrangian theory, perturbative part is easier and instanton right. part is more difficult yeah. but somehow in our case in, instanton part is more i mean easier than the perturbative part so i want to focus on the instanton part okay and instanton part is associated with the gauge group so we need gauge group okay yeah that's why i want to focus on the su2 gauging okay thank you very much yeah thanks uh any I have other a question sorry uh yeah. i have a question uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, in the usual uh, SQCD case, if you set the, uh, I think it's A, your, yeah, in your slide, A to some special value, the instant mm -hmm. volume function reduce to vortex volume function. Oh. Right. Yep. Does it, yep. Is there something interesting similar here? Some interesting limits? Uh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I haven't studied it, first of all, but uh, such kind of, Thing, must be studied. I mean, there, there could be something interesting. Yeah. Like, the thing is, um, the reason why I didn't study that is that our formula, uh, I have a formula for this necklace of partition function of this guy, but uh, it's quite difficult to compute this necklace of partition function for general values of the omega background. It's quite easy to compute it for the classical limit. I mean, it's epsilon one it equals zero and epsilon two equals zero. So oh, I, I just see. basically focus on the uh, prepotential limit. And, but if you think about the uh, uh, general, I mean, if you are able to uh, compute this partition function for uh, non-vanishing omega background parameters, then that could be interesting. I mean, there might be some connection to the vortex or something. Uh, but the thing is, technically, I, I don't know how to compute this guy for for for, for non-vanishing general values of omega background. Yeah, that that would be a nice future work. You know. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay. Good. So uh, the uh, the goal of my the rest of my talk today is to explain these two statements, and a plan is the following. In the following, in the next section, I'm going to briefly review the generalized AGT correspondence. And uh, in the following section, I'm going to uh, explain how to decompose the result of generalized AGT in, 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 into a sum over Young diagrams. And finally, I'm going to apply the result to the S-duality that involves our Jurassic cluster. So let me first uh, review generalized AGT. So uh, to explain the generalized AGT correspondence, uh, let me start with the original AGT pair. So this is a SU2 quivers, and this is a 2D configuration. At each of these punctures, you insert Villazolo primary here. And um, given this 
original ACT pair, actually you can uh, talk more, more, more than the, you can talk about more than the partition function. Actually, Zyberg written curve of this guy is also written in terms of 2D language, actually. So uh, that, that's what Gaioto studied uh, in 2009. So Gaioto says the curve of this guy is always written in this way. X fair equals the rational function of Z. And uh, uh, Z is a complex coordinate of this sphere with punctures. And uh, Q is the little locus of these punctures. And uh, each of the uh, punctures, uh, the, uh, this guy has a quadratic singularity. And a coefficient of the quadratic singularity is roughly co uh, corresponding to the mass parameters of this 4D theory. You have a lot of mass parameters corresponding to uh, hypers here. And a uh, coefficient of the uh, 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 simple pole is associated with the uh, VEV, I mean, vacuum expectation values of the Coulomb branch operators, up to some mixing of parameters. But basically, this guy is a VEV of the Coulomb branch operators. And uh, these locus of the punctures, these Qs, are roughly uh, related to the exponential of the gauge carpets. I mean, it's not a simple uh, relation, but uh, uh, basically Qs are related to the exponential of the gauge carpets. So uh, this is a cyborg written curve of this theory, and uh, it's written in terms of the 2D data. Okay. Now, I want to take a particular limit of these parameters, which maps this theory to an Algebra Stagros theory. And I want to keep track of the parameters in 4D and 2D. Uh, the limit I want to take is something like this. Qs are going to zero, and Mi's are going to infinity, and Ui's are all going to infinity. So it's like a special limit of gauge couplings, which are actually uh, corresponding to the strong, very strong gauge coupling limit. And the masses and VEVs are infinity. And in this limit, you can keep some combinations of these parameters finite. There are many different uh, limits corresponding to different combinations kept finite. And in particular, there is a particular limit of, uh, in which this curve reduces to this curve with finite coefficients here. I mean, these finite coefficient lambdas are related to some, uh, uh, given by some uh, combination of these parameters. And we can keep these coefficients finite in this limit. Then, after the limit, this curve is mapped to this curve with finite coefficients. And in the 2D language, since Qs are going to zero, all of Qs are going to zero, these punctures are colliding at the origin. So it's roughly the colliding limit in 2D. Okay? And then, since this curve has a finite period of cycles, there is a 4D n equals 2 theory corresponding to this cyber grid thing. And that's the A1, D2, N theory. This N is a pos positive integers uh, corresponding to this. So it's roughly the number of punctures you collided plus one, okay? And uh, this A1, D2, N theory is known to be strongly coupled n equals 2 CFT, and you don't have any Lagrangian description in n equals 2 sense. You actually have n equals one Lagrangian, but you don't have n equals two Lagrangian. And n equals one Lagrangian was studied by Maruyoshi and Son and friends, by the way. And uh, in terms of the 40 physics of this guy, these finite coefficients are regarded as relevant couplings, they of operators, and mass parameters. So they have physical meaning in four dimensions. Okay. So uh, what we did is we started with this AGT pair, original AGT pair, uh, and take some limit of uh, colliding these guys. So we're gonna take the colliding limit of these uh, punctures here into a single puncture. And we created a very uh, uh, singular point here. And this is usually called irregular puncture, as Satoshi pointed out. And then the corresponding 40 theory is a uh, strongly coupled algebra stagger theory called A1 comma D2N. So the colliding limit is corresponding to a limit uh, that maps this theory, Lagrangian theory, to a non-Lagrangian theory. Okay. Now, you can do the same thing with more punctures. Actually, you can take twice the number of punctures, and you can take the colliding limit of the left half into a single point, and the right half into another single point. 
then what you get in 4D is known to be this coupled system. So uh, you have one A1, D2, N3 uh, coming from this left half of the UV quiver, and another A1, D2, N3 is coming from an, uh, the right half of the uh, UV cup, and the central SU2 gauge group just reduces, I mean, descend to the bottom one. So this is the same SU2. So in the infrared, you have a SU2 gauge theory coupled to two copies of strongly coupled Azure Stable theory. And this was originally studied by these people. Uh, is this theory yeah. confirmed? Yeah, you? yeah. Oh, hi, J1. <laughs> uh, hi. Sorry. Is, is this uh, theory conformal? Uh, this one, so, good question. It's not conformal. Get, get, get. It's not conformal. <laughs> We are taking some strange limit of mass parameters and uh, gauge coupling, so we are turning on a mass parameter, so it breaks the conformal symmetry. Yeah. Thank you. So the infrared theory is not conformal. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, I have a basic question. So here you use the two knee algebra A1 and D2N to, to denote this theory. What's the meaning and the role played by these two D algebras? So, so sorry, uh, sorry could... So you use two D algebras. Two, two, two. Two. Oh, you mean the Lee Li yeah. algebras? Ah, I see. Yeah, good. Yes. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, good question. Good question. Uh, yeah, it's a good yeah, question, and everybody asks the same question. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, yeah, I mean, you mean that what's the meaning of these Lie algebras, right? Yes, it's nice. Yeah, good, good. Yeah, thanks. I mean, yeah. Um, so um, this is a 40 n equals to uh, strong rate couple CFD. And there are many uh, string theoretical way to create this 40 n equals to CFD. And one way, one possible way is to put, uh, uh, to consider the type 2B string theory on a collabial singularity. And uh, there is a Calabial singularity uh, that creates this uh, theory. And that Calabial singularity is roughly given by uh, an equation like a polynomial equals zero. And the po that polynomial is basically determined by the A1 polynomial and D2N polynomial. It's a sum of the two polynomials, actually. So what I'm saying is the type 2B origin of this theory is characterized by two Lie algebras. That was studied by Buffa and Chikori and Andy Naitsuke, I believe, and many, many other, many other people actually. Yeah, some time ago. Yeah. Does that answer your question, I believe? Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Uh, other question? Okay. Good. So uh what I what I talked about is 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 to start with this uh, AGT pair and take some limit, uh, which is a colliding limit in 2D and in 4D. That's a limit uh, going from this uh, UV Lagrangian theory to a, a non-Lagrangian theory. And um, just by generalizing the AGT correspondence, it's quite natural to assume or conjecture that the Nekrasov partition function of this guy is equal to the Lieber theory. Liber CFD on this uh, Riemann surface. At these two points, you insert the local operators, and by the state operator map, it's gonna be the inner product of two states. But the thing is, uh, these local operators are not, not the usual one, because uh, we are taking some strange colliding limit. I mean, actually, these people took an uh, interesting colliding limit, and as a result, this state is not a Bilazolo primary, and it's usually called irregular state. And uh, so the question is, what, what does this theory, uh, this, this state, sorry. And this state is a, cross, a state corresponding to this uh, irregular singularity. And uh, irregular singularity was uh, obtained by taking a colliding limit of these regular singularities. So in principle, we can characterize, I mean, we could learn what this state is by looking at this colliding limit. Before the colliding limit, we have a vacuum acted on by uh, the regular, uh, I mean, vertex operators corresponding to the uh, Bilasolo primaries. In the Lieber theory, we have exponential of this guy, this guy, that, 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 this guy, corresponding to these Bilasolo primaries. 
and Q1, Q2, Qn plus one are the locus of these punctures, but eventually we're gonna take this limit. So eventually they, they are all uh, zero in the limit. And we also take uh, the limit of infinite limit of these uh, liberal external momentum. And we take some combination of these parameters finite. That's the limit we took, okay? And uh, in principle, you could uh, uh, identify the action of the stress tensor or Villazol algebra on this irregular state because we know how the Villazol algebra act on this left state. So we just need to keep track of the action of the stress tensor uh, in that limit, in this colliding limit. And I will not show you the derivation, but the result is something like that. The result of the colliding limit is something like this. Uh, Villazolo L's, L, L, L sub K of the Villazolo algebra acts on this irregular state like this. And if K is larger than 2N, it's gonna be zero, so it's just annihilates. But if K of LK is in between N and 2N, it's gonna be eigenstate equation. Sorry, this, I should have drawn an arrow from here to here. So I wanted to say this is a constant. So lambda k is a constant, so this is an eigenstate equation. So for k between n to 2n, this is an eigenstate equation. And again, n is a positive integer. So this is a L1 or L2, whatever I mean, it depends on n. But it, in any case, it is a, it's a positive integer. And if k is between zero to n minus one, then it's not an eigenstate equation, it's a differential equation. So again, I wanted to draw an arrow from here to here. So this is a differential operator acting on this. And I guess the uh, question is, what's C? And what's the relation between lambda and C? Well, it's a technical detail, but uh, lambdas and Cs are constants related in this way. I mean, th these guys are constants and the lambda K is defined by, uh, determined by these guys so that this equation hold as a function of z. So you just need to compare the coefficients of the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And then you have a relation. So basically, lambdas are determined by c's. It's, you have n plus one c's. So roughly, these i's are characterized by n plus one parameters, okay? And this differential or operator is a differential with respect to these parameters. So oh, this is the state, irregular state, uh, studied by these people. So this is, the, this is the last slide of the review part. So if you have any question, uh, please feel free to ask that. Uh, any questions so far? Is that okay? Good. So uh, this is a review, and I'm gonna uh, try to decompose that result of the generalized AGT into a sum over Young diagrams. So uh, what I wanna do is, uh, you know, so this is a result of the generalized AGT. The partition function of this guy is supposed to be the inner product of irregular states, and I wanna decompose this result into a sum over Young diagrams. Uh, why do we expect this? Well, because uh, for Lagrangian theories, uh, the necklace of partition function for, for example, for this guy is given by this formula. And as I reviewed at the beginning of this talk, the sum is a sum over fixed points on the modularized space of instantons, and the uh, uh, path integral of the matter sector just gives you this fact. And uh, here you have uh, non-Lagrangian matter sectors, so you don't know how to compute the path integral of the matter sector, but the uh, gauge sector uh, is the same uh, uh, as before, I mean, as here. So you have the same path integral of the vector multiple, so uh, we expect the same uh, structure uh, like this, uh, same sum over Young diagrams. That's our expectation, but that's too naive, actually. This naive uh, expectation is actually wrong because uh, here the generalized AGT correspondence is about SU2 gauge theory by definition. And here, this formula, Neklasov's formula in terms of the Young diagrams are, are about the U2 gauge set. And in particular, this sum over Y1 and Y2 
is a sum of our fixed points on the instanton modularized space of U2 instantons, actually, instead of SU2. If you, if you think about SU2 instantons, then you don't, you don't get this sum. In, in order to get this sum, you need U2 instantons. So that's why here you have U2 gauge zero. Okay, so this equality is clearly wrong. I mean, it's impossible to decompose this you know, product into this one. In other words, in order to have this kind of decomposition in terms of pairs of Young diagrams, we need U2 version of the generalized AGT. We need a generalized AGT for or U2 gauge theory here. We want to replace this gauge group by U2. Okay? So the question is, what's the U2 version of the generalized AGT? And, uh, Unfortunately, it, 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 it was not studied in the literature. But the U2 version of the original AGT was studied. So by U2 version, I mean this linear gauge, linear quiver gauge theory with U2 gauge groups. So each circle now stands for U2 gauge group. And then the re, in the original AGT paper, uh, it was conjectured that the partition function and class of partition function of this guy is a product of Niklas of partition function of SU2 linear quiver and something else. You have an overall factor here. And this overall factor is supposed to be the effect of U1 part of the gauge groups. And therefore, this, this guy is usually called U1 factor. Okay? And uh, original AGT, it just implies that this SU2 factor is an endpoint conformal block of the Azor algebra. That's the statement of the uh, original AGT correspondence. And then the natural question is, what about for this guy? Is there any way to interpret this U1 factor in terms of 2D language? Isn't there any such, such, a, such an interpretation? And there is such an interpretation that was studied by these people and some other guys. They claim that this U1 part is also written uh, as endpoint correlation function of some vertex operators. But this vertex operator has nothing to do with this Villazo algebra. This vertex operator is a vertex operator of Heisenberg algebra. This Heisenberg algebra is an extra Heisenberg algebra. This is in addition to the Villazo algebra. So in other words, we are considering the product of Villazo algebra and the Heisenberg algebra, mutually commuting product or tensor product, if you like, okay? So uh, we have an high extra Heisenberg algebra with this commutation relation, and the vertex operator is roughly given by this. There, there is a subroute here, but uh, roughly given by this. And uh, the thing is, we're gonna insert this vertex operator at each of these functions. And their claim is that the correlation function of these Heisenberg vertex, operator, uh, vertex operators uh, is, is identical to this U1 factor, okay? So this is the U1 part. Uh, this, this, one, in this, yeah. this one is first uh, proposed by Nakajima. Just, just, oh, yeah. He's very. in the audience, he's in the audience, so. so. Okay, sorry about that. In, in, I, in which not, paper? I'm not sure, I mean, of course, I'm on, on the cohomology of this network of partition moment, we have this action of the solar tensor Heisenberg, that we know that, uh, in, I, I, I don't think we understand when the, the equality in the level of partition function. Uh, uh, so you mean uh, the action of the okay. W algebra or Villazo algebra is possible if you think about the uh, uh, Villazo, sorry. So even before action, the, the, the yeah. yeah, even before the AGT is proposed, we, we know that the, the, yeah, there's yeah, action yeah, of Heisenberg yeah, algebra. Yeah. Act, act. I see, I see, I see. I see. So you mean that mathematically, this kind of extra Heisenberg algebra is somehow expected? Uh, even yeah, it has been known uh, before yeah, long before. Yes. I see. I see. Perhaps it's it's even before the AGT. Much much before in the oh, 90s. I see. Oh, that's cool. Thank you very much. <laughs> Maybe I will email you to ask for a reference about. Mathematical paper. Well, but anyways, this much. is not about the partition functions. Okay, thanks, thanks. Okay, so uh, as far as I understand, I mean, uh, we, we need uh, this, this paper discuss uh, this Heisenberg algebra interpretation of this U1 factor. 
And uh, in, uh, combining these two, you can say that the partition function of the U2 gauge theory, I mean, the, this U2 linear quiver, uh, can be interpreted as an endpoint correlator of the tensor product of the Heisenberg vertex operator and the Villazola vertex operator. So the U2 version of the original AGT is given by this, uh, this one, uh, endpoint function of this tensor product of uh, mutually commuting Heisenberg and Villazon. Okay. Then, um, well, uh, the U2 version of the generalized AGT was not studied, has not been studied in the literature, but it's clear that uh, we should be able to get the U2 version of the generalized AGT by taking a colliding limit of this guy. So our idea is to take this to take the same colliding limit as before on this uh, U2 version of the AGT. Then uh, we expect uh, to get an irregular state in uh, Villazola times Heisenberg algebra module instead of the Villazola algebra. Okay? So there is an extra Heisenberg algebra acting on this irregular state, and this irregular state must be obtained in in, in this colliding limit from this. Uh, U2 version of the AGT. That's our idea. Then our claim is that these, uh, this two-point two function of uh, this operator or inner product of this state is identical to the necrosov partition function of this guy. Here we have U2 gauge group instead of SU2. That's our idea. And I will skip the de derivation that uh, just by taking the same colliding limit, what you get is this. The irregular state in the Villazolo times Heisenberg algebra uh, is characterized by this action of uh, Villazolo and Heisenberg algebra. The action of the Villazolo algebra is the same as before, of course. It's just a result of uh, the same colliding limit. So this is the same as in um, uh, Gai Ototeshina and uh, Maruyoshi Bonelli uh, tan Tanzin. And what we, get, uh, what we get here is this one. This is something uh, additional. Uh, this is an action of the Heisenberg algebra on our new irregular state. And what is interesting is this is just an eigenstate equation. There is no uh, differential operator acting on it. And Cs are again uh, equivalent to these Cs, so uh, these Cs. So uh, as I said before, irregular state is characterized by n plus one parameters. And uh, uh, lambdas are given by uh, Cs uh, so that this equation holds. So uh, this guy is a function, roughly uh, this guy depends on Cs. And action of Heisenberg algebra is just an eigenstate equation with eigenvalues Ck, roughly, or minus Ck. This is what we get from the colliding. Okay. So our claim is that the U2 version of the generalized AGT is given by this, which which just follows from the colliding limit. And then what is good is that if you think about the state in Villazolo times Heisenberg algebra, then you can easily decompose this inner product into a sum over Young diagrams. The reason is that these guys uh, uh, discuss is a nice orthogonal basis labeled by Y1 and Y2, uh, which is the basis of a highest weight module of the Villazol times Heisenberg algebra, such that, um, um, so this is an orthogonal basis, so it's not orthonormal. So there is a factor here, so you can decompose one into, uh, into this way, but you have, you have a factor here. This is not one because this is not orthonormal. And this factor is actually identical to the vector multiple contribution to the necklace of partition function. This kind of nice basis was discussed in this, this paper. And the point is that this basis is there if you think about Villazolo times Heisenberg algebra module. If you only think about Villazolo algebra, then you don't get this uh, basis, which is natural because in order to get this decomposition, you need to think about U2 version. And U2 version is corresponding to thinking about Villazolo times Heisenberg algebra. So it's consistent. And uh, these guys are some uh, lower uh, uh, examples of, of uh, these bases. So if y1 is just a single box and y2 is empty, then it's given by this formula. And uh, if y1 is empty and y2 is box, then you have this, which is quite similar to this, but you have slightly different sign here. And you have a lot of other, other states. So uh, by using this, we got this equation. 
and you just uh, you can just insert this equation in between these irregular states, and you get the decomposition of of the uh, states uh, in a product. So, in in terms of the Young dynamics, so we get this decomposition, and then it's quite natural to identify these factors as the result of the path integral of, of these matter sectors uh, in the instant on background. So we can identify uh, this inner product uh, as the uh, contribution uh, from A1, D2, N theory to the net loss of function. And uh, of course, these two are generally not, not, not the same, I and mean, they are complex conjugate to each other. But uh, somehow we are taking some uh, particular parameter uh, regions in which uh, this guy is actually real. So basically, these two are the same. And uh, it's a technical reason, but uh, for, for that technical reason, uh, we can identify these two guys. So our claim is that this is uh, the uh, result of the path integral of the A1, D2, N theory, which is computed uh, uh, as the inner product of states in the 2D theory. Okay? And the point is that we, we need U2 version, and we need Bill as all times Heisenberg version. So I guess this is the last slide of, of this section. So if there, are, uh, if there is any questions, uh, please feel free to ask uh, any questions of it. Okay. How, how much make yeah. you can make this, this right hand side explicit? Oh, okay. Because I have mean, n is uh, characterized by this, this some kind of generalization primary condition. So in practice, uh, uh, if you want to compute right hand side, Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, for now, I just have an order by order computation. Oh, uh, it's I quite see. complicated. Uh, I wanted to, so for example, in the case of fundamental hypermotor, right, uh, this guy is easily computed uh, in terms of the leg, leg lengths and arm lengths or something like yes, that. Okay. And you have a product formula. And I wanted to create such kind of formula for this factor, but it's not very, I mean, it, I, mean I, I couldn't succeed in that. I mean, it's, it's a, I mean, roughly, you it's said you, not, you, yeah. You, you, can, you, you said you can com compute it order by order. Right, right, because, because there is a way to compute, sorry, there is a way to compute uh, these states order by order. I mean, yes. they, they propose uh, how to compute these states. So we computed these states order by order up to, I don't know, eight instantons or nine instantons. I mean, it, was a, it was a mathematical problem. And we computed this in a product. And that's the best, uh, that's our best actually. Yeah. I see. We, Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thanks. Other questions? Is it, um, is it possible that it has some ADHM version of this factor? Sorry, what, what, what version? Uh, is, is it possible to write it as a say, ADHM integral? Oh, oh, oh cool. Uh, might be possible. I haven't tried. Um, in principle, you know, in principle, this theory must be obtained in a limit of uh, Lagrangian theory. And for Lagrangian theory, we have an integral formula. So uh, right. in principle, this must be obtained in a limit of integral formula for Lagrangian theory. But um, I, I haven't tried it. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps there is a lot of, there are lots of uh, divergent prefactor and we have to get rid of those prefactor to get this one from the Lagrangian one. So that's a, that's a maybe, that's not an easy problem maybe, but that's a good question. Yeah. I, mean, I haven't tried it. Is yeah, it, thanks. Uh, uh, Sorry? Take limit seems to be a little bit too difficult, right? Even for the simplest or just Douglas theory, it actually mm -hmm. have to also scale the, scale lambda to be order one to actually land on AD mm. I see, I see. Uh, yeah, you're right. I think you're right. I think you're right. Because our formula for the Grandian theory is usually for weak coupling limit. So I see. That's not, e it's not easy to uh, get the formula for this one from the formula for weak coupling Lagrangian theory. I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah, good, good, good point. I think you're right. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, yeah, in any case, uh, it, it, it'll be good to get an closed form expression for this formula. For now, I have a, a order by order computation, brute force, com brute force computation, but that's a future one. Okay, okay so uh, I have five more minutes. So I'm gonna briefly uh, 
talk about the application of this uh, our work to to the S duality. So, uh, what kind of theory we, I want I want to talk about? Uh, I want to talk about this theory uh, with one extra fundamental hypermultiple coupled to this SU2. As I said before, I don't have AGT way to compute the partition function of this guy. But this theory is quite interesting because uh, this SU2 gauge coupling is, has, has vanishing beta function. I mean, the beta function of this gauge coupling is actually zero because the contribution from the extra fundamental hyper and the contribution from the algebra stable series are canceled by the contribution from the vector multiple. That's, uh, that's the case if you, own, if you have an extra fundamental hyper. So this is a conformal field theory. And uh, uh, as J1 pointed out, if you don't have extra fundamental hyper, this is not a conformal field theory. But if you have an extra fundamental hyper, this is a conformal field theory. So that's why we are interested in this. So tau is an ex exactly marginal coupling. Now, um, for various reasons, this theory is also believed to be invariant under the S duality or PSO to Z transformation. And uh, tau IR is roughly given by uh, Redoff from the cyborg witten cup. It's a, a IR gauge coupling and tau is a UV gauge coupling. So it, they are not the same. Tau IR is a non-trivial function of tau. But uh, uh, there is, uh, we expect that there is an P action of PSO to Z. Uh, on this theory. And there is sort of beautiful story about the S duality and uh, that was studied by these people. And uh, this is, so this is quite similar to the S duality of SU2 QCD with four fundamental flavors. So there, there, there seems to be some similarity between these two. So I want to uh, compute the partition function of this guy and see the effect of S duality in that computation of the partition function. So let me compute the necklace of partition function of this guy, but here I'm gonna replace the gauge group with U2 because our formula for, uh, our formula is for U2 gauge group. So I wanna replace uh, the gauge group with uh, U2. Then the uh, necklace of partition function of this guy is supposed to be given by this formula. Um, here uh, you have a sum over uh, Young diagrams because we have uh, the U2 gauge groups and we have an instant on factor. And the Q is roughly exponential of the UV gauge coupling. And uh, this guy is again the contribution from the vector multiple, and this guy is the contribution from the Algebra gauge series uh, that we read off from the previous section. And here we have an extra fundamental hyper. So we have an extra fundamental hyper's contribution. So uh, these guys are Lagrangian series. So we know a formula for this. And this guy has a formula read off from the previous section. So in principle, you can, you can compute it. And uh, subtlety is that here we have a gauge group, uh, U2 gauge group. So in the most precise sense, this theory is different from the previous theory. But uh, uh, we believe that the U1 part is somehow uh, trivial when all the massive deformations vanish. For, for example, this mass for the fundamental hyper and the other uh, relevant couplings or dev of uh, Coulomb branch operators of fractional scaling dimensions to vanish, then in that case, uh, we believe for some reason that the uh, U1 part is trivial. So we are set these massive deformations to zero. Then this partition function is gonna be a function of Q, which is this, and A, which is a VEV of a scalar in this Lagrangian part. So this formula reduces to a function of Q and A. And let me show you the result of our formula. Um, so as I briefly commented uh, at the beginning, uh, I'm gonna take the classical limit of the necklace of partition function. So I'm gonna take the, the log of necklace of partition function and the classical limit. So this is a prepotential of this. Uh, this is supposed to be the prepotential. And using our formula for Z neck, we get this formula for the prepotential of this theory, okay? Tau is a UV coupling, and Q is exponential of tau, and A is a web of scalars. And this is one of the main results in our work, but what is interesting is that when you compare this result with SU2 QCD with four fundamental flavors, you have this, which is actually somehow related to this one by this change of variables, um, on S3, 
We don't have a physical interpretation of this guy, but somehow uh, we computed this guy up to 16 centons or 18 centons, I forgot. And we get the same coefficient here uh, as here. So uh, we believe this result for the prepotential of this interesting theory is obtained from the prepotential of this guy by change of variables and also the rescaling over rescaling. This means that the S duality of this theory uh, can be seen from the S duality of this guy. Okay? And uh, since I don't have time, I, I, will, I, will, I will make a summary. I have another slide, but I, I, will, I, will, uh, I will summarize what I talked um, about. Uh, we are yeah. flexible about time, so if you want to explain one more slide, it's okay, totally fine. Uh, okay, okay, thanks. Okay, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it depends, yeah. Okay, let me, let me, let me show you an extra slide. Okay. Thanks very much. So, uh, so what, I, what I meant is that uh, from uh, assuming this uh, relation between this Lagrangian theory and non-Lagrangian theory holds for all order of Qs, then um, we could predict the coefficients of this guy from the coefficient of this guy. And actually, coefficients of this Lagrangian theory is totally known. I mean, when you, uh, so for, for this SU2 uh, QCD with four fundamental flavors, prepotential is a function of Q times A square. A is a wave of uh, Azure scalar. And by defining this part uh, as tau, then Q is known to be given by this formula. If you have a theta function uh, equation, because you should have a, mo a nice modular property because the S duality implies a modular uh, transformation for this guy. So we have this equation. This is already known for Lagrangian theory. And if this relation holds uh, to all order of cubes, then we can predict this coefficient actually. Q and tau IR uh, is supposed to be related to each other by this relation. Q is replaced by Q squared. Uh, and I forgot, maybe tau must be replaced by two tau, maybe, sorry, maybe this part must be ta two tau. And then uh, the, we can read off, uh, we can read off how this UV gauge coupling, how, how this Q transforms under this uh, S transfer, S duality transformation. I mean, this guy is totally a mysterious normal Grangian theory. And uh, we expect that the action of S duality, PSL2Z is there for, for this theory. But uh, I guess uh, assuming this, uh, this relation between Lagrangian theory and non-Lagrangian theory, uh, we can predict the coefficients here. And in principle, uh, we can read of how this UV gauge carbon transforms under the S, transform S duality transformation. And now we are uh, checking the, how, how the other massive deformation parameters like uh, relevant couplings, depth of Coulomb branch operators transform under this uh, S, duality tr S duality transformation. And so far, everything goes very well. So uh, we, believe, uh, uh, we believe we can report on that uh, computation in our paper uh, very soon. I hope that that's gonna come out this month or next month. Okay, so uh, this, is, this is the end. So thank you. So let me summarize uh, my, uh, my talk. So um, today uh, I, I introduce you a U2 version of the generalized AGT that we propose in our, in our work. And that's basically given by this equation. The next class of question function of this guy uh, is conjectured to be given by this inner product. And this is an irregular states of Villazola times Heisenberg algebra. And uh, N is uh, this N. And uh, this inner product is easily decomposed uh, in, in, into a sum over pairs of Young diagrams because of the nice basis, this guy, uh, of the Villazol times Heisenberg module. Uh, this basis is there because we consider this product of the algebra. If you only think about Villazol, uh, this basis is not there. And using this, this, from this decomposition, we identify this guy as the contribution from the, uh, this algebra stagger sector uh, a path integral of these algebra sector in the instant on bar term. And using this uh, conjecture, uh, we computed the partition function of this guy, uh, and that result shows that the S duality of this guy is closely related to the S duality of this guy. And these two series are, uh, appear in many contexts, actually, 
And actually, uh, last year, we wrote a paper about the sure index, super conformer index of this guy and this guy. And in, also in that case, the sure index of this guy and that guy is also, they are rated in a similar change of variables. So there must be a nice physical uh, interpretation of the relation between these two. So far, we have a formula relation for the super conformer index and the necklace of partition function. But there must be a nice physical relation between these two. So that's it. Thank you very much. Um, is there any question? Okay, let me ask one thing. So, so you just compare the, the uh, pre-potential between these two theories. How about yeah. next to leading order? If so, oh, okay. <laughs> Did you oh, yeah. uh, not really. Uh, well, there is a technical difficulty. <laughs> oh, okay, I see. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's a that's a big difficulty, and that mu that must be solved. Um, the reason is that, yeah. So uh, where is it? <clears throat> so uh, in order to compute the uh, our formula, mm -hmm. we need to. Uh, uh, take care of this differential operator acting on the irregular state. This is about the Bilazova case, but the same thing appears in the, in the Bilazova times Heisenberg mm -hmm. case. Mm -hmm. And actually, this differential operator, contribution from this differential operator is subreading in the sense of epsilon expansion. So when you focus on the uh, classical limit, epsilon one equals zero, epsilon two equals zero, then you don't need to take care of this guy. These, these guys are subreading. Mm -hmm. But when you, Need, when you look at the subreading correction, you need to compute this guy. And computing this uh, differential is basically the same as uh, computing the partition function of this guy itself. Yep. You know, in our, in our case, the partition function of this guy itself is in the perturbative part of the necklace of partition function. Mm -hmm. And we omitted it. I omitted that in, in this talk. I was focusing on the instanton part of instanton expansion uh, in, in parts of the Q here. So uh, I, I was not computing the perturbative part uh, because computing the perturbative part is quite difficult. I wrote some papers about it and some people wrote uh, some papers, but that's very complicated. Mm -hmm. And the instanton part is much, much easier. But when you focus on, uh, when you think about the subreading corrections of omega background, mm -hmm. you need to, look into those perturbative part because perturbative part and the instanton part are correlated to each other I see. as a shoot. Yeah, I see. that's a good question. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I wanna tackle in the next paper, hopefully, mm -hmm. because, uh, because uh, even though I didn't explain, um, the necklace of partition function for general values of omega background is related to uh, the S4 partition function, sphere partition function. Mm -hmm. And if you are able to compute the sphere partition function, you should be able to compute the correlation function of Coulomb branch operators, right? Because Zohar, Kamagorsky, and uh, people are studying the matrix model description for the uh, correlation function of Coulomb branch operators and mm -hmm. one anti Coulomb branch operator. And that is closely related to the sphere partition function. So if you are able to compute the sphere partition function uh, mm -hmm. just by looking into this, this uh, factor, mm -hmm. then you should be able to compute the Coulomb, uh, correlation, correlation function of Coulomb branch operators of this theory, I believe. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to do in the future. Uh, or some, 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 of, some of you in the audience uh, <laughs> could write a nice paper and <laughs> that would be great. Okay. Thanks. Okay, can I ask some yeah. questions? Uh, yeah, first of all, thank you very much for a very nice talk. It was very interesting. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, I, I have one comment about this funny mm -hmm. uh, scaling that kind of reminds me of my old work uh, where we compared okay. SP1 instanton counting. Versus oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And there was yeah. something similar happened there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I looked at your papers, actually. Uh, that, in that case, that relation comes from the Z2O folding. Yeah, there, it has some geometric interpretation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we expect similar Z2O folding happens here, but 
somehow we couldn't get it. So uh, yeah, there must be some 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 I mean connection between that work and this work, I believe. But yeah, so I, I wanted to. I was wondering if if this this uh, uh, replacement is related to some Z two Orbi folding. Uh, yeah, but but I I, I, I don't know. How, I, I was not sure how to how to justify that. It would be nice if this one is interpreted uh, as a result of Z two Orbi folding. You know, and maybe maybe I, I should look into look into your paper. Uh, again, yeah, I, I'm not sure whether that's going to help. I know. <laughs> uh, well, well, <laughs> actually, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I should definitely cite your paper. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, another question is that: Is there any particular reason why you focus on uh, A one D four series? I, I kind of presume that you can do uh, the same thing with. <sighs> Cool. Series also. <laughs> yeah, good question. Good question. So, for example, if you have a one d six here and a one d eight here, mm -hmm. then it's impossible to make this gauge coupling That's to nice. exact exactly marginal. I mean, yeah, this is the only I believe this is the only interesting case with vanishing beta function in the presence of fundamental hyper. I believe. I believe uh, there is another another case without fundamental hyper. And but in that case, you need a one comma d odd theory, I believe. Yeah. Right. And the, our formula is unfortunately for a one comma d even theory. So yeah, that's another problem. I mean, you should be able to generalize our work to a one comma d odd theory. And I think you are more familiar with those theories. <laughs> I, 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 I'm just familiar with the a one comma d even theory. So I was wondering, someone can write a paper about it. <laughs> <laughs> a, a generalization of this story to a one comma d odd theory. Okay, I'd like to give it a I shot. Mean, yeah, <laughs> a one comma d odd has SU two global symmetry, right? Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. So you could gauge it, right? Yes. So uh, I guess. Yeah. Were, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but the thing is, colliding limit is not possible, as far as I understand, in the case of a one comma d odd. I might, yeah, right. It doesn't contain this U1 flavor, so probably it doesn't really arise from quite. Oh, much. yeah, yeah, that's true. That could be one issue. Yeah, that's also an issue in, in the case of original AGT, I mean, generalized AGT without U1 part, actually. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, but good, good question. Yeah, that's a good point. I see. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay, if not, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you very, very much. Um, I will stop the recording. I will stop the recording. I will leave this space for informal discussion. So if you have more ah. informal uh, questions and so on, um, please ask.